Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Happy to be here. So good to see you, Pastor Nate and Cheryl. Oh my goodness, we missed you guys. Would you guys all please stand? And I'm going to share a verse from Psalm 46 before we get started. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, because we know how we have a glorious hope, we have a glorious Savior. He is going to come again for his church. Amen. So we're going to sing this song, Glorious Day. Good to see you all here. My goodness. Uh, man, I want to share a verse 
We sang this song a couple weeks ago, and I want to share a little before the verse because I, I didn't share this a couple weeks ago. So I want to start from verse 1 here. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, in the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Wherever me battle, wherever me heartbreak, wherever me circumstance, I believe that you are my fortress, you are my portion, you are my hiding place. I believe you are the way, the truth.
so amazed by you this morning, Lord, that you were so faithful to us. Even when we are faithless, you are faithful, God. We thank you so much, Lord. so much for your love towards each of us, God, that while we were yet sinners, you died for the ungodly, God. Those that didn't deserve it, you, you would do it again, Father. We thank you for how wonderful you are towards us, your forgiveness and your mercy and your patience with us, God. We thank you for your faithfulness. All we can do is praise your name and worship you because you are so beyond worthy of our praise. This is the least we could do, God how we look forward to that day in heaven where the choir of angels is singing out and we could just join in one voice, Father. 
We all look forward to that day, and we just thank you, and we pray that you would just bless this message, God. Help us to be faithful. Help us to be faithful, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Good morning. Am I on now? Am I off on my end? Am I on? I don't want anybody to have to. There we go. No, it's still not. There we go. Something. The online people feel really bad when they have to try to lip read through my beard. It's really hard. I want to say um, on behalf of Pendleton Church of God, second service, welcome again. So glad to see everybody here excited about today. You guys see that um, today is kind of a special day. Obviously, anytime we get to celebrate with somebody that's stepping into the next step of obedience and baptism, it's just an amazing day. So I am so excited about the end of our service as much as um, preparing for the rest of this service. But I want to I want to be transparent this morning. We are joining with the body in Christ around the world on today, the International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church. As an extension of that, this Friday, we have a special prayer and worship service um, at 6.30 p.m. here, November 12th. I want you guys, we're going to show a, a video here in just a second. And we need some per- perspective sometimes about how blessed we really have it and what's really going on for us. And I'm, we'll, we'll get to some more here in a second. I just want you guys to watch this video and, and then we'll get after the message this morning. So go ahead and dim the lights. Dan. Dan, dim the lights. Okay. Perfect. <clears throat> وقتی من در رو باز کردم چون به عنوان پستچی اومده بود پاشا گذاشت لایه درد که من نتونم هیچ حرکتی انجام بدم و بعد گفت ما حکم داریم که خونه شما رو بازرسی کنیم بعد از اینکه حالا پرسید اینجا کجا هستش سراغ اونا گرفت دم سلوله یه سلولی بود که پر از جنایتکارا بودن می گفت میخواید همسر دو بچه هات بیارم دیگه که خب اونجا به من می گفت حتما باید با ما همکاری کنی و اسامی همه دوستات به ما بدی که من از این کار تمرد کردم من اونجا مسیح و کنار خود احساس کردم ایمن و اینکه همش این آیه تو کلام برای من می اومد که خدا من سخره من است خدا من نجات دهنده من بعد گفتم که اگه از تو بخوان که مسیحا انکار بکنی هرگز 
گفت پس عواقب بدی های تو با من هستی تا آخرش همراه من هستی گفتم من واقعا تا آخرش با تو هستم ولی حاضر نیستم هیچ کدوممون به هیچ عنوان مسیح ها انکار کنیم ما مون هم دیگه دعا کردیم پایین دادگاه بودیم و گفتیم واقعا خداوند دا هر اون چیزی که خواست و اراده تو باشه اون تقویت رو بده ما هم اون را بپذیریم و همین که برای دل اون افرادم که توی اون بالا داشتن برحال حکمی هم خواستن برمیسن برای اونا هم دعا کردیم برای ایسا هر چیزی که بخوام حسابش کنم کمه بخوام تسلیم کنم خیلی بیشتر از این چیزی که باشم بدم بازم ازش شده I was watching that now for the second time because I got to see it at the first service. I hadn't actually seen this video. What did God do for you that made you believe? We have it so good here. We have it so good. There is so much real persecution, real hardship for the believers across this world. And I, and I implore you guys to join us this Friday in prayer and in, in worship of the Lord God Almighty who's in charge of every circumstance and every situation. We get an opportunity to participate and partner with the Holy Spirit, partner with God in just praying. Because this isn't flesh and blood, but spirits and principalities. You guys saw it. They prayed in the courthouse and then they were freed. God intervenes. No matter our circumstance. This is just, it's kind of a big, big thing. I'm going to start this morning, guys. I'm not here this morning to preach a new message. But one I'm confident you all know. The Lord has put this on me to remind us of our obligation to God and to one another. We don't stand alone, but we stand unified in Jesus Christ. We are one body in one spirit in Jesus across the world, or in this church home, or in our house, we have unity in Jesus. There is nothing more important than that. When the truth of God's word is preached, and lives turn to it because of the salvation it brings to a life away from God, that's what we have in Jesus. His work being done, and he uses us. I want to, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians to start this morning. I got a lot of scripture to get through, so I better get after it. But I'm ringing just a little bit, brother. I don't know how much voice I have left, too much worship, <laughs> preaching first service, but 1 Corinthians chapter 12, one body with many parts. The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some of us are Gentiles, some are slaves, and some are free. We see that even in this video. The reality of what he was talking about then is still the reality today. But we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we share the same spirit. Whose spirit is that? The Holy Spirit, Jesus' Spirit. 
we have one spirit. It brings us unity. Yes, the body has different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I'm not part of the body because I'm a hand, because I'm not a hand, that does not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear says, I'm not part of the body because I am not an eye, would that make it any less part of the body? Or if the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if the whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? But our bodies have many parts, and God has put us each where he wants us. Let's, let's pause right there. Who is it that decides what part of the body we get to be? Come on, guys. Who is it? God. When we acknowledge and we speak out loud these things, then we can take ownership for what we know. It's kind of important to come in agreement. We know God does this work in us. God calls us. God does these things, okay? Our bodies have many parts, and God has put each of us where he wants us, wants it. How strange a body would it be if it had only one part? Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can never say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some parts of the body that seem to be weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. And the parts we regard as less honorable are those we clothe with the greatest care. We carefully protect those parts that should not be seen, while the more honorable parts do not require this special care. So God has put the whole body together such that extra honor and care are given to those parts that have less dignity. This makes for harmony among the members and that all the members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all parts are glad. Let's pause right there. When we truly stand in Christ Jesus, in unity, in love with what God has called us to, loving each other well, we are excited when one part is honored. We are blessed as the body. It's not like competition and like, oh, I didn't get honored, so that's, I'm not excited about that. That's a, a spirit of division. That's not, a, 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 that's not from God or the Holy Spirit. There's, there's something about if, if we were called by God to be, say, an ear, and we choose to be a mouth, and we haven't listened to God, and we haven't heard from Him, but all we do is speak because we want to be heard. Are we going to distract the body from the important things? We need to surrender to God and His will and be honored to be the part of the body that we are. There is not one higher than another. There's not one more important than another. They are all valued, and God gave them all purpose. Okay? Okay? As we go farther here, we're going to talk about the gifts in the church, the spiritual things, and all kinds of things that we're going to get into today. But the context is this is so important that we understand that Jesus is doing a work in us, and it's up to us to surrender to it and be faithful to it and allow God to actually use us to do it. Because if we step out of his way and you know, out of his will and literally do our own thing, God will raise up somebody else, but he's calling us. He's calling each of us. And I don't want to be an ear that's up here preaching. I'm, I want to be a mouth if I'm supposed to be a mouth today. And I, and I promise you guys, I want you to have ears to hear what it is the Holy Spirit's speaking to us. So I'm going to pray over us real quick before we get any farther along in this message. And if you guys would, just bow your heads with me and, and open your heart to God in this prayer. Lord, I, I thank you and I praise you for this moment and I praise you for this, this time in us. Lord, I pray that your, your Holy Spirit would come and that you would fill us each with knowledge and wisdom and understanding, heavenly wisdom, heavenly knowledge and understanding that we wouldn't think from human wisdom, but we would surrender to your way, Jesus. Lord God, I ask that your word would be made known to us in such a way that it would change us and that we would be encouraged and equipped to go and be who we're called to be for your glory, Father. Lord God, we love you and we praise you and we give you this whole service. We give you this day and all that it has before us. Lord, we thank you for it. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All of you together are Christ's body and each of you is part of it. Here are some of the parts God has appointed for the church. First, in not any order of importance, it's just listed here, Apostles and prophets and teachers and miracle workers and those with the gift of healing 
and those with the, who can help others, the gift of helps, those who have the gift of leadership, and those who speak in unknown languages. We see things here that the church, the body of Christ, those of us that are completely surrendered to God, we need to see all of the gifts in the body to be effective in the fullness of our call. We have to have all of these things. And, I, and I'm asking you to, to search your heart. Ask the Lord, what is he asking you to be? Which one of these things maybe are you ignoring your call in and, and chosen a worldly thing? I, I shared in first service this morning that the, the biggest thing that's actually going on right now in the whole world isn't politics and isn't you know climate change and isn't any of that. You know what it is? Satan using the big D on it. He's distracting us. He's distracting us from what Jesus calls us to, which is unity in Jesus through his spirit. If we don't have unity, we will not be effective. If we are dividing our own causes in between us and we are, and we are nitpicking on different things, we are not faithful. God is calling us to so much more. And in these days, we see what's going on around the world. We just watched this video. We know that there are hard things for a lot of people in this world. And I, as your, one of your pastors here, believe wholeheartedly that God has shown me that that is coming here to America. Are you ready to stand for Christ in everything? Are we equipped and prepared to be all the things the body needs us to be as one body? I know that it's not fun and pleasant and definitely not exciting to think about hard times coming. Let me ask this question. How many of you guys right now see a difference from today than it was two years ago, just in our culture and our society and expectation? Raise your hands. I want to see participation here. Every one of you guys right here almost in complete agreement that there is an absolute change and we see the change happening fast. Who wants to agree with me that's happening a lot faster than we expected? With God doing what he's doing in me, with his spirit, I'm praying that he's doing in you what he's doing in me, in unity preparing us. We are called. We are called to be the church fearless. We don't need worldly things to be in Christ and be who he's called us to be. We don't need anything but Jesus. And in these days, that is contrary to the world's message, which is a distraction from what we as Christians in, in Christ are called to be, unified in Jesus. We don't need anything but Jesus. Are we all apostles? Are we all prophets? Are we all teachers? Do we have power to do miracles? Do all of us? Do we all have the gift of healing? Do we all have the ability to speak in unknown languages? Do we have the ability to interpret un unknown languages? Of course not. So you should earnestly desire the most helpful gifts. But now let me show you the way of life that is best of all. The next section of scripture there in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is all about love. I'm not even going to talk about love. That's not where we're going today. But without love, after all of these things that he said is in the church, that God is calling and equipping into the church, we need love. And I'm going to start right now. We need to love God more than ourselves. We need to love God more than our lives. And we need to fear God more than losing our life. And I promise you, if we do these things, we will actually, from God, through his spirit, have a deep love for one another. That's what's happening. For those that are seeking is a love from God that only God can bring in, in harmony, in unity, in direction. And if you're, if you're wondering if why, only, why I'm saying that, if, and you haven't been feeling those things in your heart, I ask you, I implore you, I say that again. Seek the Lord with all your heart. Don't be distracted anymore by worldly things. Allow God to build in you this truth that his word is speaking to us. Where I'm going to take us today is through almost, like four or five different books in the New Testament. It's not in one place. I'm not going to bring one little message that, you know, like, well, that's kind of, con no, I want to, this is all of it. It's all the same message, but it's here and here and here. The whole Bible, every book of the Bible is pointing at Jesus. Every book talks about Jesus, his plan, and his plan that he has called us for a time such as this. Because of our faith in him, we, like Abraham, can be called righteous. 
Not because I'm a good man, not because you're a good man or a good woman, but because you have faith in Jesus and what he did, that he, you, you believe in your heart that he died, he rose again, he is the son of God, that he is called Messiah. Do you guys understand what that means? If that is true and he fills us with his spirit, we have something that the world needs, the truth of the gospel of Jesus. And I'm telling you, it is important that in these days, we become a mature body. It's not okay anymore to just sit back and come to church and be better than our heathen friends that don't know anything of God. Do you think the angels and the demons and Satan himself know who God is? Maybe because your friends don't know God at all, but that, does that make them better than the demons? Do they surrender their heart to the Lord? If they, if they have, they are in Christ Jesus with us that have believed the same thing. If we are disobedient and, and literally denying the word of God when it says that we are to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote Matthew 28, go out and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all my commands. And then he says, don't forget that I'll even be with you even unto the end of the age. But he calls us to go out and make disciples and teaching them to obey all his commands. Are we ever a disciple who is called to teach them part of the commands but ignore those ones because the world or the people around us don't agree with them? Do we stand on this Bible as truth, as the firm foundation in the word of God? Or do we waver in our faith because we don't think God's word is really for us? I ask that question only so that you can know in your motive of answer is determining whether you're in Christ's fullness of obedience or if you're not as mature as you think you are in Christ. We know of God. You know what the word of God says? That every rock and tree and mountain and everything created speaks to the creator God that he is over everything in this world. There is no one that's going to deny that there's a God. We can deceive ourselves. We can choose to ignore the fact that all these things are true. And that is a consequence because he is a just God and he's given us all free will. But the consequence of free will in rejecting is life eternal away from the presence of God. No no one here is going to die and just become worm food and stay in the dirt forever and just not have anything going on. We will forever in eternity live because he's made us spiritual beings. We have a body, a soul, and a spirit. We will live forever. But where we live is dictated by our faith in God, in the presence of God with Jesus, or our rejection of that faith and eternal darkness. And I promise you, we want unity in Christ Jesus. If we are in disunity at all, we aren't who we think we are. And today is enough to change us. This message, his word today, is enough to change us. If your heart is wavering, if, it's, if it hasn't been who it's called, God's calling you to be, repent and turn from the sin and the distraction and the things of the world and get back in the word and get back in the truth and be who we're called to be. We need every one of those gifts. When, the, when things get hard and we don't understand why people are getting sick and we go to the Lord for healing, we better have someone with the gift of healing around us to pray over people because it's not a person that's blessing us, it's God himself through somebody, right? What happens when we, when we have the gift of prophecy but the, the person with the gift of prophecy isn't prophesying and isn't sharing with us what's coming? What happens? We're deaf and blind and we don't know what's coming and we're, and we're fearful. What happens when we, when we lack Faith in just the simple things and trusting God's word. We get trapped and deceived in the worldly things. So what do we need? Good, sound teaching. We need those with the gift of teaching. Guess who, guess who calls teachers? Not Oregon government, not federal government, not somebody that just wants to te- teach for nine months and then have three months off. You know who calls teachers? God. It is a gift from God. I know everybody in this room was taught by somebody that was a really good teacher probably and others that were worthless. And I say it nicely. (laughs) Worthless because they weren't living in their calling and they're doing something for their own pleasure, their own glory, their own purpose. And we all have areas of our life that maybe we have decided that, you know, I like what that honor those people get. I want to be like them. I'm I'm going to pursue that path. And God's calling me to this path over here. What am I doing? I'm not going to be producing a lot of fruit. I might actually be kind of worthless at what I'm thinking is important, right? 
Is it okay to not understand at first what it is God's calling you to? Do you think a child understands how to walk at the very first time that parents try to teach him? They're watching their parents walk, so there's this understanding that it can be done, but a child still has to overcome its fear and build the strength to do so. That's us, guys. We are called, and maybe we, like a child, see what we're supposed to do, but we don't know how. And we need to go to the Lord for that strength. We need to go to the Holy Spirit for that wisdom, for that discernment and understanding, for the things that only God can give in God's time so that we can be the, the effective body we're called to be. I promise you this, in any place where we think we're helping somebody else by doing something for ourselves, that's a place of foolishness. I'm going to tell you right now, love your neighbor. Give them the truth. Okay? So now, we're going to go on to Romans. That was all for free, like Pastor Nate likes to say. Oh, sorry. This is going to be in chapter 12. And we're going to start in verse 3. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. When God warns us, it's a warning to the body for a reason. Now listen again. I give you this warning. I see you all reading ahead, but this is important. you got to have spiritual understanding, spiritual knowledge from God to fully understand why the warning is the warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given you or us. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we belong to who? Each other. I am accountable to you for my faithfulness in, in, my, in my call in my membership of this body. Do you guys understand? Are you going to be faithful with your call and your part of the body and bring it? And it doesn't mean if you're new into our church today, this isn't talking about, you know, like some local, it's literally the body of Christ in, the, in general, all of us. And there's times, I'll tell you this nicely, that God sends you into a place because he's called you and he needs you to go get there and be effective in what he's called you to. If you feel yourself being uprooted, it's because he's equipping you for something greater. But if you're just running out of fear and you haven't grown in maturity, are you going to be effective where you go next? No. A wise person doesn't, you know, like, hey, let's go into, I'm teaching the youth group. I got a bunch of my kids here tonight or this morning. It's going to be really cool. Um, I'm teaching them through the book of Proverbs. And I'll, uh, real quick, I'll read before I go farther here. I'm just going to read this. Um, I don't want to misquote it, but Proverbs chapter 1, verse 4. These Proverbs will give insight to the simple, knowledge, and discernment to the young. I read that, and I was asking the Lord what all the things I need to do. And, and there's some things in Proverbs that our culture hates. And there's some things in Proverbs, if you're willing to address head on, you're going to have a lot of questions, especially from young ones or people that have an alternative to the truth of God's word belief. You know, there's hard things. But I'm asking the Lord to give us his wisdom. I'm asking these kids to seek the Lord in, in godly wisdom, in, in understanding in these things. And so I'm coming from this place of diving into deeper and more trying to seek wisdom from God in a way that I, outside of my own understandings, I threw away three, three whole sets of notes, guys, and I just threw them away. I just couldn't. So literally on my page, I have, it says one body. I wrote my, my one line to you, which I said at the beginning, and then I just have scriptures. That's all I have. I, nothing else. I couldn't share what God's asked me to share from Luke. I couldn't do it. And every time I went to the word and I went to the heart and I needed to hear from the Holy Spirit what he wanted to share. I, I have human knowledge. I have understanding. He's given me some strength and gifts. And sometimes it causes me to stumble because I am thinking like I understand what he's trying to do. And I got to get out of that way sometimes. And I'm asking you guys to get out of his way and allow him to do the work in you and through you that he's calling you to. Because if you don't, somebody around you is going to suffer. And we, as a whole, are suffering. A child only stays a child if they're not allowed to mature and grow. And I'm asking you to read the word with me, to dig in on your own. Know it, study it, write it on your heart. I was just watching that video. What if we 
weren't allowed to have the Bible to remember back to and refer to, and we had to go out into the world right there where we were at. And if you never had a home to go back to to get arrested at, that'd be pretty easy for them not to find you. And if you never had a Bible, but you had the word written on your heart, and you're just out telling people, guess what? At a certain point, they're going to have a really hard time to wrap something to tie you down with. That'd have been kind of... I just got super challenged. I'm like, I'm so comfortable, and I love my Bible. But I need to know it so I don't have to have it because it's in me. You see what I'm saying? There's so much here. Okay. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as he's given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. That gift of serving is almost more important than all the other ones. You know why? Because without the strength and support in serving, those other ones get discouraged because they don't have the support to keep doing the things that they're called to do. If, if you think you have you know, no other gifts and you don't understand and you're choosing to step back because you don't get to sit out front and have one of these other things, guess what? You're, you're missing out on a blessing from the Lord and a, a joy of the Lord that comes in when we get to do what we're called to do. And I promise you what you'll find is a love for serving your fellow man, for serving the body of Christ, for serving the less fortunate. And it's not from a worldly perspective like, oh, there's these people that have hard times and I got to go mark it off and do this exact. No, it's like God's calling me and I have people in my own life that are struggling with discouragement and don't have somebody to speak into them. And they might have a, have a thing in their life that I could help them with. Or maybe there's, maybe there's people at church that literally are, have been asking for help in these things. And, you know, I just don't really know if I want to do that. But God's calling me to help. Step up for a season and grow into maturity, into the next thing. I, I'm telling you this. God has been doing an amazing thing around our youth group in this last last couple of year season. We have been raising up more than one pastor. God is calling young men. It's just an amazing thing what God does. But none of it matters if we don't have places or things for them to shepherd in the next season because they're, it's not seen as valuable or it's not the world's plan or process. And here's the thing. We are called by God with a purpose, and you have got to fulfill your purpose. And I promise you, if you don't have a lot of hope in your life right now, and you're struggling with joy, and you're under anxiety and these other things that the world is, and you got fear, it's because you're not surrendered to the Lord in everything. Maybe it's just a little thing you need to cut out and point back to Christ, but you're, you're not surrendered fully to Him. What happens to me in my walk with the Lord is if I am not being faithful to God, or I'm being disobedient to something, you know what happens all of a sudden? I can't hear Him no more. And my peace goes away because I'm walking in Luke's power and Luke's strength and Luke's understanding. And all of a sudden, I am foolish. And I got to go, oh, what happened? How come I, I don't know what to do now. This, I got all these opportunities. I don't know. What should I do, God? And so I, I got to get on my knees. We war not against flesh and blood, but spirits and principalities. And the only way we have is through prayer. And prayer and fasting as well. There's... There's an understanding in, in spiritual maturity and things. Jesus showed his disciples a lot of things. And if you have the gift of showing kindness, do it others gladly. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold on. That right there is a challenge. When we see what's wrong, we need to actually oppose it. Hate it. Not accept it. You guys understand that? Okay. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. I got to stop right there. I, one, one line in my... Thing. That was the one thing the Lord said. I need you to highlight that. I think it might have just been for me, but I'm going to share it with you again. Rejoice in our confident hope. Who's our confident hope? Jesus and Him alone. Rejoice in it. Be excited about it. And then be patient in trouble. The world around us right now and all the disagreements and the, the, the big D deception that's going on everywhere and all the, you know... It's not just deception, but like disunity and, and, and the, all of it is 
point, you know, get people riled up, get angry about something, do something, act out of rage, act out of malice, act out of your righteous indignation or whatever. And I just read right here, and the Lord just put it on me. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. I am doing that in our church right now, guys. I, I have certain gifts and certain strengths, and with those gifts, I have a lot of defects and other things. I am quick to act and, and, and excited about what God's doing, and I press, and I, and I struggle when people don't want to hear the word and grow in it in truth and, and want to stay in the old things. It, it, it burns my soul. But I got to be patient. And if I feel like the, the church is being pressed by the Lord to be ready for something new, and I know what it is we're called to do. I shared it a second ago in Matthew 28. To make disciples who can make disciples. Let me ask you this question, and don't raise hands. Have you made a disciple this year who's made a disciple? Because otherwise, you're not a disciple maker, and you're really not a disciple of Jesus. You know Jesus. You might be saved. There's a difference between those people, the, the, the one on the cross that accepted salvation at that moment, and the disciples that walked with Jesus. You know what it would have been like to be hanging out, be a bomb fisherman, hanging out with the boat, had all your nets, had, pretty good at what you do. You've been doing it a long time. And Jesus said, leave them, come after me. But we got to make a living. We got to pay for things. We, got, we need food. Dude, are you serious? Logically, none of that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? To us right now, it doesn't make sense. To honor God right now, you might have to give up things that you have spent your whole life chasing. Are you willing to give it up because God's called you to something greater today? I believe the Holy Spirit is doing a new work. It's the same work he's been doing from the beginning, but a new work in us today here in the United States and in the, in the church, in the true church. We are waking up and we're seeing the reality of this world that we're in. And we thought America was good and we had Christian values. We know we don't now. The evidence is obvious we don't. Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed because of the judges that allowed lawlessness in their country or in their cities. We are a country that is allowing lawlessness and we, we have denied God in so many things. We are, we are killing our babies and, and thinking it's okay. We are sinning against God in so many ways as a nation. Judgment from God is coming. The church better raise up and be the body equipped with all the things that he's calling us to. I am prepared, I said this first service, I am prepared for all of you to reject me and reject this. I don't want it, but I'm prepared. I know how hard it is to hear this message. It was hard on me. It's been breaking me. I gotta, you guys, we got to give up stuff that you don't want to give up. The world has tied us up. We are ineffective because we are giving so many loyalties to everything other than God. But as we give in and surrender to him, there's a joy that is worth everything. What God is doing in those hearts that are surrendered to him is unimaginable. I'm crying right now because I'm seeing God's hand in so many young lives and so many people that are just fed up with being part of things that aren't of God. And I'm watching God turn them back. And I implore you, join the Spirit of God and be part. This next window is going to be amazing. We don't have much time. That's, that's the whole thing. If you've got family members and friends and loved ones of any form that aren't with Christ... And the path that you've taken to this point, hoping that they would come to Christ, hasn't worked. And you just choose to keep that path. Is that probably a wise path within those relationships? I need, I need some answers. What do you guys think? No. When, when the Israelites had their mighty warriors and they were doing awesome battle and destroying their enemies, and the, and the leader of the army is told, you know, we're going to send the worship team out front. We don't need you guys today. Step back. You think they like to hear that? Mm -mm. And then they walk around Jericho, trumpets are blaring, and 
are faithful to what God calls them to, and God does the destruction. God did all the work, and they get to be part of what God's doing. That's what I'm asking you to do right now. I'm not asking you to figure out a new scheme in your own understanding. I'm asking you to join with the Holy Spirit in unity and be part of what He is already doing. We are called to greater things. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people and don't think you know it all. Those are important things for us. Very important things. We're going to go to Ephesians chapter 4 real quick. I didn't know I was going to get emotional this morning. Sorry. Therefore, I, a prisoner... Who's this? Paul, that big man that liked to write all, all these cool people. The guy that actually murdered Christians and was good at it. The guy that, if anybody had a, a reason to not be called up, was Paul. So let me, let me say that again. Have any of you guys been out here murdering a bunch of Christians? Anybody? Raise your hand right now if you're committing murder. Not in your heart. No, okay. So guess what? If God can call Paul, who else can he call? Raise your hands. Everybody in here, I want to see your hands up. So who's he calling? If your hand's raised, he's calling you. He is calling you out of something that you thought was good enough where you were into something new with God, an obedient relationship, a surrendered heart. Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. That's what I'm telling you. I'm confessing in front of you guys. I need the Holy Spirit to help me in these areas so that I can gently love you too and not give up on you too quickly. And I need you guys to be patient with me when I'm too blunt sometimes because I do know what we're supposed to do and I struggle when we're not doing it. We all need each other. Do you guys understand what that looks like? We got to be there. There's people around you right now. There's people in this room suffering discouragement beyond all understanding. And that's because we haven't been who we're called to be in loving each other and being there for one another. Iron sharpens iron, meaning we rub against each other and we change each other in a good way. It's not convenient to just hang out next to each other in the air and do our own things. But, you know, oh, it's good to see you. See you on Sunday morning and smile. No, we're like, how are we doing? Is, you know, that person we've been praying about, have they come to Christ yet? Okay, what do we got to do now? That step's not working. What's our next step? Love people well. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. There is one God, the Lord, one faith. Sorry, there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is over all, in all, and living through all. However, he has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. That is why the scriptures say, when he ascended to the heights, he led crowd captives and, and gave gifts to his people. He led a crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. Notice that it says he ascended. This clearly means that Christ also descended into our lowly world. And that the same one who descended is the one who ascended higher than all heavens so that he might fill the entire universe with himself. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and to build up the church, the body of Christ. We need to acknowledge the gifts in the church. We need to equip them and encourage them and support them. It's not days anymore to just have a bunch of people doing their own things and we're a bunch of mavericks and we just come together and worship God together in one local place. We have to be... I just heard a story this week about a a teacher. I'm not even going to say where or what state. You guys probably already know the story, but she decided she didn't want to follow some of the stuff that was going on and the, the teaching that they're required to pass down in the books just it was more than she could in her conscience before the Lord um, 
deal with. So she resigned her, her job as a teacher. And she decided she was going to rent a building on her own and she was going to go out and decide to put an ad out there. If anybody wants her kids taught, I, I, she, she's a teacher. She want, she's called by God to teach. And she wanted to teach. And um, she had a little meeting and she thought she'd maybe get started by December. Well, this was like last week, October. She has enough to hire two full-time teachers herself and more kids than they can handle with just one plea. Yeah. Our kids are so important. They're so easily led astray. And they're also the blessing from God to our families. I, it's time. We don't reject that blessing and send them off into captivity, into Babylon's false teaching, that we teach them the truth of the word of God and that alone. And we need to be about the things we're called to. So there's gifts in this room, helpers and teachers. I have an evangelist heart. I love to light fires in you and watch that fire just go, and I just want to find more people to talk to about it. I had to quit logging for my father after 10 years because I loved every minute of being in the mountains and logging and I have the rough neck. I just love the mountains. Me and God are close in the mountains. But I had to quit because my dad quit hiring new guys to, for me to witness to. I witnessed to everybody. And I, I mean, many times over. And I joked, joking to my dad, um, we were moving equipment. I said, Dad, you're going to have to hire some new guys or I'm probably going to have to go. And it was three months later, God was calling me out. I just... I want you guys to know it brings me great joy and it brings the father great joy to see his kids thriving in what they're supposed to be doing. Think about how much pride you have and how much joy. You know, pr the word of God says pride cometh before a fall in us if it's pride in ourselves. But as a father has pride in his kids and love, and that's a blessing from God, the father God Almighty has pride in us and is thankful for us when we're faithful. It's important. I want you guys to be exactly in the center of his will. I don't want you to be on the side waiting for everything to work out and then jump in at the last minute. I want you to experience what stepping out in faith looks like. It's not comfortable. It's not convenient. I had discussions this week with more than one person. Um, and the human logic can rationalize decisions constantly because, you know, we have to you know, provide for our family. We have to do these things. We have to step into, you know, like this understanding like the world puts on us. You know, this is the expectation. And I'm like, do you trust God? You have anxiety about this situation you're choosing to still participate with. Do you trust God that he's put that in you to separate you from it or put you somewhere else? Do you trust him? Do you trust him? And I had to say it over and over and again. And finally, after this person repeated it, like, I think it took four times. He's like, I don't think I trust God. And I said, there it is. So now we know how to pray. We pray for courage to be able to trust God with the things that right now we think we're trusting God with, but we're really not. There's things that God is calling us out of. Mindsets that right now we've enabled and justify how we behave because it's been acceptable. I'm going to tell you right now, to be the disciples when Jesus called. How about the story of the, the rich young ruler that obeyed, fulfilled all the law, did everything that Jesus said, except for the one thing, the last thing, he couldn't take his money, all his possessions and his pride and joy, all the stuff that he had accumulated with that wisdom and knowledge that he had acquired and couldn't give it to the poor and follow Jesus. Jesus offered him exactly what he offered the other disciples, to be a disciple of Jesus. And he turned and left. I'm offering you guys the same thing. Jesus is offering us the same thing. Are you going to accept it and be willing, like the, the first disciples, throw your nets down and give up what you know, what your comfort is, and where, where you know your next meal is going to come from to trust the Lord? What's going to happen if we do, guys? Even if just 10% of us in this room do, this town's changed. This town needs to change. I love this community because God has called me here. I was raised here, but it breaks my heart the leadership that we have here and the agenda pushes for things that are not of God in so many things. Do we love God? Are we going to be faithful to what he's calling us to? Are we going to be okay anymore? It said hate what is evil. We got to hate it and not be okay with it anymore. Right now until they are killing us, 
because of our faith and our sharing of it, until they're killing us, we need to be bold in the truth. Because we have a short window here to do that. We can do it in love too. Do you guys know that? You can speak truth in love and have it be received even when it's hard. I think that's what the Holy Spirit's doing this morning. I think the Holy Spirit is changing us, softening us to really seeing us the way we ourselves can see ourselves like Jesus or, or God as the Father sees us. He loves us and he wants more for us. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Is it up there? Yeah, okay. Finally, all of you should be of one mind, sympathize with each other, love each other as brothers and sisters, be tenderhearted and keep a humble attitude. This is what it comes down to, guys. We must love each other and we got to sympathize with each other and help each other. Tenderhearted, keeping a humble attitude. Some of us are going to have a deeper understanding and a deeper knowledge of things that are the way they are right now. And some, some, like children, are just now waking up to it. It's okay. The Holy Spirit did something really cool in this young man in the Bible called Timothy. He was young, and he argued with such passion and so much truth that they could not corner him or discourage him in his truth of the word. There wasn't an eloquent argument from any point of view that with the Holy Spirit, he couldn't head on with the word of God. And I promise you, that's where we need to be. It doesn't matter how long we've been in the game. If we surrender to the Lord and let the Holy Spirit do this work in us and write the word on our hearts and live in it, we will be ready for the things that come. I said it before. I'm preparing my heart for some of you to not be part because... This message was not something that is easy to hear. And over time, the enemy will put big wedges in your heart. Well, he, he doesn't know really what I have to suffer, what I have to deal with. The enemy is going to throw all these things. And I'm telling you right now, I have not one person in mind on any of this. This is the Holy Spirit put in my heart. I wrote no notes. I did nothing. The enemy is going to throw discouragement at you. And he's going to give you somebody that you know, somebody from your past that's that itching ear to make you feel comfortable right where you're at. He's going to send you, Satan is going to send you around people that want to keep you in the world. And I'm going to tell you right now, the remnant is waking up. And I want you to be part of the remnant so bad. It's where joy is. None of this stuff matters, guys. None of, none of this worldly stuff, everything that we toil with is just... If you don't have to worry about that stuff, it's so freeing. And all we get to be is who we're called to be and love people well. Live in the blessing of the Lord. The Lord is restoring hope in so many things. So many testimonies of just so many things that God's doing. First Peter chapter 1. We're going to flip, flip your Bible forward one page. I'm going to start in verse 14. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then, but now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scriptures say, you must be holy because I am holy. And remember that the Heavenly Father to whom you pray has no favorites. He will judge or reward you according to what you do. So you must live in reverent fear of him during your time here as temporary residents. That's perspective, guys. This isn't our home. How many of you are ready to give up this world and this home for the home he's planned for us? That's the perspective we need. And I'm going to be honest. I don't get to judge. You don't get to judge. None of us get to give rewards or, or you know, trophies. There's no participation award. The Father God is going to reward based on what you do for Him, for His glory. He's called all of us to produce much fruit for Him. The sower that's in Christ will sow one seed and it'll produce 30 or 100 fold in spiritual kingdom fruit for the King. Meaning... Because you've discipled well, you're going to disciple into somebody who's going to disciple into somebody else who's going to share the truth with somebody else. And the kingdom of God is being filled with the saints because of your faithful, 
obedience to the truth. For those of us that think we understand what discipleship is, discipleship the old way got our nation into this shape. Do you guys hear me? Churches we've done in the past is not going to be in the fruit of the kingdom of God in the future. Some of the places around the world is producing much fruit in much persecution. That's the, I hate to say it, but that's the important thing. We'll know we're doing what we're supposed to do when the world hates us for what we're doing. If we're not hated, it's because we ain't bright enough and we're not helping the truth. We've got to love the world enough to give them the truth. They're on a train headed down a track, headed for a gorge that there's no track across. And it's our job to wake them up, get them off that train, point them on the path of righteousness. He loves you, each and every one. He's called you, each and every one. Not one in this room has he forgot about, has he rejected. Not one in this room doesn't have a call on their life. The call might be just starting out as a helper, helping a teacher teach the truth now. <laughs> helping your, your neighbor help them because they got their kids at home right now because they're so scared of all this garbage and they don't know what to do, but they don't really have a support system. Be who you're called to be. Reach the lost. Don't slip back into your old waves of living to satisfy your own desires. Everything in this room, in this moment, it's so easy to sit here and go, okay, yeah. What's going to happen as soon as we're done with this moment in this next moment here of a baptism and all these things? Actually, Hunter, or sorry, not Hunter, Max, Hunter, if you want to go, do you got some clothes you want to put on for a short so you want to do it in that? Go ahead and go get changed right, real quick. You want to do that? You're, oh, you're in that? You're ready to go? Okay, I just saw a bag, so okay, that's fine. Um, I want you guys to know that no matter what, no matter what we're doing, no matter how we're bringing glory to the Father, no matter if, if the Lord isn't glorified, really, it's for nothing. It's smoke, it's vapor in the wind. But if God has planted a seed in your heart and you haven't pursued that and haven't grown that and haven't surrounded yourself with people that are going to encourage that, now is the time to do so. It's important. Let me pray over us, and then we're going to go into this next time. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your spirit. Thank you for this word that you've shared. Thank you for just the truth in your word, and that it, that it doesn't change from one part of the Bible to the other. Lord, it's the same. It's steadfast. Lord, thank you for being a just God that loves mercy and that helps us with your grace. We can find your truth. Lord, I ask right now that you would give us understanding and help us to really see ourselves right where we're at. Lord, in the areas of our heart and life that are attached to things of the world that are dying and that are going to bring destruction upon us in our association with, Lord, I ask that you would help us cut these ties now. Give us courage and obedience. Help us to be like Abraham, willing to sacrifice no matter what, even our child in his case, Lord, we were we sacrificed what we think is our future, what our plan was. We sacrifice that. We give it to you, God, for your plan, for your future. Lord God, teach us your ways. Guide us on a path of righteousness for your name's sake, like your word says. Be glorified in every heart, in every life. Lord, help us to remain steadfast to your word and unwavering in its teaching. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We give you all glory, all honor, for you are worthy above all else. Thank you for what you've done in us. Thank you for our families and, the, and the, the love we have. Help us to grow that towards each other in a way that is bringing you much glory, Father. In your name we pray. Amen. Elijah and my big brother over here. You guys want to pull this lid off? I got to take this off. Oh, there you go. Andrew got his spot taken. Just set it down there and let it, there you go. How many, got, how many times in your life did you choose baptism, guys? What's the answer? 
What's the Word of God say? The answer is once there's one true baptism. Sometimes we have this moment where we think that, you know, I've separated myself from God, I've been unfaithful, I've been disobedient, and I haven't really been who I called to be, and I, I just need to go back to that place where I felt closest to God, and I'm going to surrender again, I'm, I need to be baptized again. I'm okay with that, and I'll, I'll you know, I don't know what, where you're at with the Lord at that other time, if I get to be involved in the second time, whatever, but here's the thing, I want to say it one more time for all you guys in the room right here. There's one true baptism in the Spirit. There's one true baptism. And when that happens, the life of, that you've given over to the Lord changes. And He makes us a new creature in Him. And this young man right here has got a call on his life and a call on his heart. And he is ready to walk in obedience and surrender to that. So, do you have something you want to share with us before I start asking you questions? Can I read from your Bible? Absolutely. <laughs> here, I'll put my mic up to your ear. Then Philip, uh, Acts 8 says, uh, 35 says, Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came into a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth, I, what doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And I commanded the, the chariot and stand still. And they went down, down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. <laughs> I've, been, I've been putting my brother off here for a few weeks, you can tell. <laughs> so Max has had um, some really challenging things in the last season in his life and been part of some things that between him and the Lord, his testimony is just what God's doing right now is amazing. And, and for the family here that knows what God is doing right now and how, how much of a change in what it is, when we surrender to God, it's real and he changes us. And it, and it brings us to completion into some of those things. Um, it's time. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. I don't even need to ask because you guys already heard it. He's, you know this is a brother, right? He's accepted already. Jesus says, Lord and Savior, come on in. I'll hold your hand so you don't fall in your socks. I've done it before. Step all the way down. Let me take your glasses so you don't have to have foggy when you get out. I'm going to pray over you and then we're going to do this. Father God, I just thank you for Maximus Hunter and the call you've placed on his life and his heart. Lord, I thank you for this young man and his obedience to you. Lord God, in this next season, I pray that you not only fill him with your spirit, give him wisdom. Give him knowledge from your spirit. Give him spiritual gifts for the season ahead that this body would grow and that they would be made whole like, Lord, like you're asking us to. Bring us to completion slowly and steadily, Lord. Let us not be ahead of you or behind you. Lord, take this young man in his heart. Make it pliable in all things. Let the truth of your word be the truth he stands firm on all of his days. Let him bring much glory to you and much honor to his family. Lord, we praise you and we thank you for Max. And Lord, we just give him over to you in these days. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, Maximus Hunter, I baptize you. <clears throat> <laughs> Hand me a towel. Two of them. Come on out. Grab his hand. So, is there anybody else that God is doing a work in, that the Holy Spirit has already done a work in, and you know right now is your day? What I said before wasn't to discourage you about there being only one baptism. What I'm telling you is that if this is your day and you're truly ready, don't miss it. I knew childlike things when I was a child. I want you guys to surrender to God and be called in every form. I love you guys. Go be with the Lord this week and I'm going to give this brother a hug.